This time I got an Onkyo DXC390. This is the sixth disc CD changer. And the problem on this one is when you press the button to open the drawer, the drawer closed, closed again. It has a mind of its own, according to the owner. Let's check it out. It won't open. Oh, that time it did. This is going to be a mode switch. There's a switch that indicates or tells a microprocessor when it's open and when it's not, when it's closed. And it's going to be a switch, guaranteed. Guaranteed it's going to be a switch. Now, I haven't worked on one of these Oculus before, so it'll be interesting to see how much different these are than, say, Sony's were. There's a six disc changer, whereas Sony's were typically five. And so was everybody else's, for that matter. But they found a way to squeeze an extra disc. Oh, well maybe that's why it's, <laughs> there's a disc in here. I don't think that's why it's doing that. I think the disc just fell out. But uh, get the disc out of it anyway before it gets damaged. Where is the switch on this? It's going to be, I'm going to unplug this while it's open so that we can access the switch. It's going to be a switch down here somewhere. It's just where are they located on this one? is the question. Looking to see where the switch might live on this one. It uses optical sensors to detect which disk position it's in. That's what these slots are. It's read by an encoder over here. That's how it knows which position the disk is in, but there should be a mechanical switch somewhere in here, underneath the tray somewhere, that tells it when it's open and closed. And that is what I'm looking for. I have to lift the front cover off. I want to lift out the disk tray. I have a feeling there's a cam switch on the bottom of that gear or a mode switch on the bottom of that cam gear. The gear rotates both directions. It rotates to open it with the disc in as well as with the disc out so that you can exchange the discs without um, stopping it from playing. It turns one direction for that for disc exchange and it turns the other direction for regular loading. So I think if I remove the front face plate I'll be able to lift the disc tray out and then I might be able to uh, see what's under that gear. Okay, that comes off like that. And then, there's screws that hold the front on. There's two more screws here that's got to come out. What else has got to come off on this thing? It's totally different than the uh, units I'm used to looking at, that's for sure. As far as disassembly goes. Now this lifts off, or it'll tilt down, and I can probably lift out this tray. Ok, 
Okay, I can unplug this front panel. Get that out of the way. Now, somewhere down here, this should lift off. Maybe if I open it. cable that's in place here I gotta watch out for. I don't want to damage it. After removing a bit of tape that's holding it down, the ribbon cable will slip through here so that I can release this and pull the front panel off. Okay, that's out of the way. Now I should be able to remove this gear and see what's under this. Oh, here's some switches right here. Ah, that's where the problem's gonna be. It's gonna be these little switches here, these little contacts. This is what tells the, the controller what it's doing. And these little switches, they always go bad. Those little buggers right there. Let's get some contact cleaner, clean those up. And this should fix this one. Make it work for years. Okay, put this back together. Okay, next, put the disc tray back in place. Plug it in. And then loop it under the little holder here. And I gotta put the tape back on there just to stop it from getting pulled out. That'll lock in again, just like that. so that you can do a disc exchange. See, in this position, the laser is up and then it lowers the laser down and opens it for the regular loading cycle. All right, now the front panel can go back on. It should be pretty straightforward to fixing one of these. I think anybody can probably do one of these units. They're pretty simple. Plug the two plugs back in. Don't worry about mixing them up. I'm sure it won't matter. I think if somebody will actually believe me when I say that. Of course it'll matter, but you can't because they are keyed specifically so that they can only go in one place. I think I gotta put those in after.
panel will snap on again. It just clicks in place. Snaps on just like that. And then the other screws go in the bottom to hold it in place. I should have probably put the disc tray in when I still had it apart. Oh well, that'll go back in pretty easy, I think. So these four screws go in. Put the disc tray assembly back in place. Just gotta kind of open it up to do that. And it just sits in like that. So the front cover slides in over the front of the disc tray. Like that. Okay. I think we're ready to try this out and see whether it will operate correctly this time. I'll do a scan to see if there's any discs. And now when I open it, it should open and stay open. And I can load a disc in. I'll try one of my discs. Disc one. There we go, it's fixed. If I hit the open close button, it'll open up for exchanging discs. If I stop it and then hit the drawer open, it'll send the disc out so I can eject it. Okay, this one is done. If you have one of these Onkyo machines that's behaving like that, now you know where the switches are. They're underneath that cam gear. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.